Hello, welcome to another episode of Math with Mikel. On this particular episode, we are going to look at the solutions to core mathematics WASI 2023 for Gambia, which is a likely question for Ghanaian students. Okay, before we get into it, kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel Math with Mikel and put us on post notification so that anytime we drop a video, you be the first to be notified. Question one. A man bought a car for $8,000 and later sold it at a profit of 15%. He spent $4,500 out of the amount received and invested the rest at 17% per annum simple interest. Calculate the interest in in four years. Okay, so the solution. A man bought a car for $8,000. So the amount given here is the cost price. So cost price given was $8,000. Now profit percent was also given in the question to be 15 percent. Now there's something we don't know which is the new price. So we want the new price. That's what we've been asked to find. Now we can say that new price is equal to 100 plus profit, that's the profit percent, over 100 times the cost price. So let's substitute in the values. We are going to get 100 plus 15 over 100 times the $8,000. Okay. So this is going to be We are going to get 115 over 100 times the $8,000. And we can conclude that new price, therefore, new price is going to be $9,200. Okay. Now that we have the new price, he says that he spent... 4,500 out of the amount received. So, can get amount invested. Amount invested is going to be 9,200 minus the 4,500. This is the amount he invested out of what he received. And it's going to be four thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Now it went ahead to say that he invested the rest at seventeen percent per annum simple interest. So you should calculate the interest. So simple interest. Is going to be giving us principal times rate times time all over 100. So if we substitute values 4600, sorry, times the rate is 17. And the rate, which is um, it's seven, seven in the original question, seven times time is four years, all over hundred, and this is going to be one three zero two zero zero over hundred. We are going to get interest. $2,000. 
to be equal to 1,302,000 dollars. That's $1,302. This is the interest. Now, the B part of the question says that given that log into bracket 3x minus 1 plus log 2 is equal to 2 log y, we should express x in terms of y. So basically, we want to make x the subject of the expression. So the solution. We have log to bracket 3x minus 1 plus now they have the same base log 10 log 10 and they are adding so it's going to multiply it's equal to now 2 log y we know is the same as log to bracket y squared okay so if we take anti log on both sides If we take anti log on both sides, we are going to get 3x minus 1 times 2 is equal to y squared. If we expand this, we are going to get 6x minus 2 is equal to y squared. Now we want to express x in terms of y. So we get 6y, so 6x is equal to y squared plus 2. We divide by 6, we divide by 6, and we conclude that x is equal to y squared plus 2 divided by 6, and we've expressed s in terms of y. This answers the question 1. Question 2. The cost of 2 chairs and 3 tables for an office is $1,800. After a month, the cost of each chair and each table increased by 20%. The office again bought six chairs and two tables at $4,800. Calculate the new cost of a chair and a table. Wow. So, the solution. We don't know the cost of a chair, the cost of a table, but we know that the cost of three tables and two chairs is $1,800. So let's so solution. Let's cost of each chair be X and cost of each table B Y. Okay, so the cost of two chairs and three tables is going to be two x plus three y, and this is one thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay, so that's the first part. Now it says that after a month, the cost of each chair and each table increased by. 20% so increase of a chair now if a chair is increased by a certain percentage how do we find the percentage increase that's um, the percentage times the cost of the original chair so if a chair increased by 20% you are going to get 20 over 100 times the cost of the chair now after getting this we add it to the original chair the price of the original chair so this is what you are going to get x plus 20 over 100 times x so the 20 over 100 times x will give us the um, the percentage increased afterwards we add that value to the original cost so this is what you are going to get 
and this is the same as 120x over 100. So x plus 120x over 100. Now, increase of a table. So let's do for the table. Increase of a table is also going to be y plus 20 over 100 y. So if we simplify this, we are going to get 100 y plus 20 y all over 100 and this is going to be 120 y over 100 okay so what happened next so after the percentage increase the office again bought six chairs and two tables six chairs and two tables so that's going to give us Six multiplying the number of chairs, which is 120x over 100 plus two tables, which is 120y over 100. And what is the cost of this? $4,800. So this is going to be 4000 800 dollars good so let's let's simplify this you are going to get 720x over 100 plus if 2 multiply 120 we get 240y over 100 and this is equal to 4800 dollars let's simplify further the LCM here is 100. So if you multiply 2 by 100, you are going to get 720x plus 240y is equal to 4800, another two zeros. That's $480,000. We can, we can break these figures down to, to its simplest form. So let's continue. So we can let this be equation 2. Because we already have equation 1 here. So if we solve equation 1 <clears throat> and equation 2 simultaneously, we are going to get the value for x and y. So from equation 1, from equation 1, if we make s the subject in equation 1, we are going to get x is equal to the 1800 minus 3y all over 2 so we can call this equation 3 now we should substitute equation 3 into equation 2 if we substitute equation 1 so equation 3 into equation 2 this is going to give us 720 into bracket 1 1800 minus 3y all over 2 plus 240y is equal to 480,000. Let's continue. So if 720 multiplies the first bracket, this is going to give us 1. Two nine six zero 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 minus two one six zero y all over two plus two forty y and this is equal to four thousand eight hundred four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So the LCM here is two. We can multiply two by two. I multiply 2 by 2 and this is going to give us let's continue here 1296000 minus 
1 says 0, y plus, if 2 multiplies, 240, we are going to get 480. So plus 480y is equal to, now 2 multiply 480,000. And that is going to be 960000. That's 960,000. Don't be, don't be scared by the figures. This can all be break down to its simplest form. So let's find y. Let's find y. So we are going to get 1296 zero 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 minus nine hundred and sixty thousand is equal to two thousand one hundred and sixty y minus four hundred and eighty y good so if I perform this subtraction I'm going to get three three six zero 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 is equal to 1680 y so if i divide through by 1680 1680 this cancels this and i'm going to get y to be equal to 200 now now that we have the value of y we can substitute that into equation 3 and we'll be able to find x so, say that x is equal to 1,800 minus 3y all over 2. So, x is going to be 1,800 minus 3 into bracket 200 all over 2. And we are going to get x to be equal to 1,800 minus 6,000 all over 2 and x is going to be 600 so we know the value of x we know the value of y so the question says that calculate the new cost of a chair and a table so we wrote an expression for the new cost for a chair is 120x over 100. So new cost for a chair. New cost for a chair, the expression was 120x over 100. So get 120 over 100 times the x we had it to be 600 and this is going to be 72 sorry 720 thousand 720 dollars sorry 720 dollars the new cost for table. New cost for a table. Now the expression for the cost of a table is 120y over 100. So you get 120y over 100. And this implies 120 we had y to be equal to 200 over 100 and this is going to be 240 dollars and this answers the question 2 now question 3 there's a diagram the diagram is a sector of a circular cardboard. PQ is 10 centimeters and angle PQR is 126 degrees. If it is folded to form a cone, 
such that PQ and QR coincide. You calculate the surface area, the volume of the cone. Now, before we can get the surface area of the cone, we have to know the radius. And before we can get the volume of the cone to, we have to know the height of the cone. Okay, so I'm going to draw two diagrams here and I will describe those diagrams. So, solution. Solution. The first diagram here, say diagram A, is what has been given in the question, which is the sector. So I have 1, 2, 6, 10, P, Q here, and R. And the B is going to be the cone. So if A is folded to form a cone, now we have to know the height of the cone. So the height here is H. We have to know the radius, which is R. Now L is given in the question as the slanted height. It's also 10 centimeters. Okay. So we know figure A is a sector of a circle and figure B is the cone. H, H here is height. R is the radius of the base. of the cone good um, L is the slanted height L is the slanted height so we have to we have to find the H and the R now the sector the sector of the circle should be the same as the circumference the sector should should give us the circumference. So, to solve this, we can say that theta over 360, the angle over 360 times 2 pi r is equal to 2 pi, it's a small r, where the r is, is 10 centimeters, the capital R is giving us 10 centimeters. So if we substitute the values, this is what you are going to get. 126 over 360 times 2 times 22 over 7 times 10 should give us 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius we don't know. Okay, so everything here, this zero can cancel this and things will cancel out. We are going to get 22 is equal to 44 over 7 times R. So we multiply through by the 7, get 22 times 7 is equal to 44 R. And this becomes 154. And R is going to be 154 over 44. And we can get the radius R to be equal to 7 over 2, which is 3.5. So that gives us the radius. Now for the height, so for H, which is the height. Realize that what we have here is, is a triangle. The height, the radius, and the slanted height here is a triangle. <clears throat> so we can use the Pythagoras theorem. So this becomes the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares, the square of the sum of the other two sides. So this implies that L squared. L squared is equal to 
h squared plus r squared. So let's let's substitute. L the slanted height is 10. Is equal to we don't know for h, but we just found the radius r to be um, 7 over 2. All squared. So we are going to get um, 100 squared is, sorry, 10 squared is 100 minus 7 over 2 squared is going to be 49 over 4. And this is equal to h squared. So we are going to get h squared to be equal to 351 over 4. If we take square root on both sides, we are going to get the h to be 9.367 approximately 9.37 so we have the radius and we have the height so you can go ahead to answer the questions the first question says that we have to calculate the surface area so surface area of a cone surface area of a cone so a surface area is given by pi r l pi is 22 over 7 times the radius which is 7 over 2 times l the slanted height to be 10 you are going to get surface area to be equal to 110 centimeter squared. Good. Now the B is to find the volume. Now the volume of a cone is given by 1 over 3 pi r squared h. So V is going to be 1 over 3 times 22 over 7 times 7 over 2 squared times the h 9.37 so if we substitute everything if you punch everything on the calculator we are going to get v to be equal to 120.248 conclude that volume is equal to 120.25 centimeters cube And this answers the question three. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mars with Mikhail. Just take a moment, click on the subscription button, the red button down. Yes. Click on the subscription button and put on not the put on the notification bell. So after subscribing, click on the bell to, to turn the notification on. Okay, question four. We have a word problem. The sum of the interior angle of two regular polygons is 2520 degrees. If the number of sides of one of the polygons is three less than twice the number of sides of the other, find the number of sides of each of the polygons. Okay, so solution. We don't know the polygon, so let's let A and B represent the polygons. So A and B should represent the polygons. We have two of them. We don't know the size of any. So for A. For the first polygon, you can see number of size for the first polygon, you can see number of size should be equal to n for b. Now, if the number of size of one of the polygon is three less than twice of the other. 
So number of size for B. Now, this is three less than twice the number of size of the other. So if the other is N, twice of the N is going to be 2N. And three less than the twice is 2N minus three. So the number of size for the first one is N, and the number of size for the second one is 2N minus three. Now in the question, the sum of these two angles here is two two sorry two five two zero. So sum of two so of the two interior angles is equal to two five two zero. So let's perform some calculation. Now, the sum of interior angle of a regular polygon is giving us n minus 2 times 180. So, n minus 2 multiplying 180 plus, so this for the first one, plus the second one here, n is, we have 2n minus 3 minus 2. Multiplying 180. And this is equal to 2520. So the first one, I have n minus 2 times 180. Plus the other one is 2n minus 3 minus 2 multiplying 180. So this is going to give us 180n minus 360. Plus, we are going to get 2n minus 5. Multiplying 180 should be equal to 2520. Please, if you are still watching this video, kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so. Support us by subscribing to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to leave your comments because we are doing this together. So if you have any suggestion, you can write it in the comment section. Let's continue. We are going to get 180 n minus 360 plus so 360 n and 180 times 5 is 900 is equal to 2520. Okay, let's continue. So what we want to find is, is N. So 180N plus 360N is going to be 540N. 540N minus, now minus 360 minus 900 here is going to be 1260. And this is equal to 2520. So 540n is equal to 2520 plus 1260. 540n is equal to 3780. 3,780. So, you want to find N. We divide both sides by 540. N is going to be 7. N is going to be 7. So, the number of sides for polygon A. So, let's continue here. Number of sides for polygon A is equal to N because we said 
for a the number of side is n so we had n to be seven now number of sides for polygon b was given us 2n minus 3. So since n is 7, we are going to get b is equal to 2 into bracket 7 minus 3. So 14 minus 3 and the number of sides for the second polygon, which is b, is 11. Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Question 5. The scores of 15 students in a quiz competition are 2, 6, 4, 7, 6, 8, 9, 5, 3, 4, 2, 8, 7, 6. A. We are asked to calculate the mean of the scores. So, solution. We want the mean of the scores. So, A. So mean we add all the numbers. So sum. Sum of events. Divided by the number of events. So this is going to be 2 plus 6 plus 4 plus 7, plus 6, plus 8, plus 2, plus 8, plus 7, plus 6. And everything here divided by the number of events, which is 15. And this is going to be 82 over 15. Therefore, mean as S bar is going to be 5.47 so that answers the A part of the question now the B B says that if a score is chosen at random find the probability that it is an even number so B Probability of an even number. Probability of an even number. So, this is going to be N of E over the samples, the total samples. So, how many even numbers do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we have 9 even numbers. So 9 over 15. And this gives us 3 over 5. That answers the BI. II. Find the probability that it is an odd number. So probability of an odd number please subscribe to the youtube channel mass with Mikel, and put us on post notification so that anytime we release a video you'll be notified on your device now how many even numbers do we have here we have six one another six two three is here so 9, making it 3, 3 is here, 4, and 5. So we get 5 over 15. And this is 1 over 3. Now, I wouldn't want this video to be long. So I will end here. So in this video, we solved from question 1 to question 5 which is the compulsory aspect of their question. So the next video, which will be the part two, is going to be from question six through to question 13. Kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so. 
share this video put us on post notification comment like this video and make your colleagues also benefit thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one